Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, June 27th. We have a full work week this week. Next week, next Monday, we are off. Just want to go ahead and put that little bug in your ear. Next Monday, we will be off to celebrate um, the 4th of July. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look here at our futures. We, you can see here that we are continuing our move up. I'm going to um, just move this up so it's a little bit easier. And you notice, so I get a lot of questions why I look at the futures chart so much more often or so regularly compared to the spy chart. Obviously, I watch the spy chart every day. I watch it um, during the day. But when I'm looking at pre-market, aftermarket, and kind of overall um, feel, I don't know, I feel like the futures market gives us a more complete picture. And uh, often here in the um, futures market, we very rarely see those gaps. So that's something to be mindful of. We did have, when we had these waterfall candles, a couple of weeks ago, we did actually have a gap in the futures chart, but you won't find those nearly as often, and that gap has now been filled, but you won't find those nearly as often as you will in a spy chart. So the, the, it's smoother to me, and I like to take a look at it, and of course, looking pre-market, um, unless you, so Think or Swim does not do a nice daily smooth pre-market, so I look at the futures. So anyway, here we go. This is a trend line that we drew in, Previously, we sliced right through it, and last week we came right up, and right at uh, near the close there on Friday, I said I would really find it bullish if we could close you know, over that trend line, and sure enough, we did. We came back in this morning, used that trend line, and jumped up. Now, what's important about this trend line? Well, the first thing I would point out, it's downward sloping. We are not in a, um, a position yet where we can say that we've made the, the turn in the market. Could, have we? Well, we might have. Um, but we, I'm not seeing that yet until we break up and make a higher high. That, to me, will be a much better, stronger indication that we are on. Health and Street the reason I mention that is I've had several people talk to me about that we did that we made a higher low right here. We didn't continue to go down. Well, that's true too. And we've seen that a few times. We saw it here where we did not make, you know, this was a higher low here, you know, so it can certainly happen. But when you look at the overall pattern, it still is pointing downward. So until we can move back up and put in a higher high, so to me, that really would be way up here at the 417. We are only at 390 something here this morning. Um, so until we do that, I am still in a downtrending market. There's a lot weighing on us, whether it's energy prices, um, supply chain is still really messed up. And we will continue to see inflation regardless of um, whether or not they raise rates. We need to raise rates, but we will continue to see inflation um, until we get the supply. That's what, so inflation is just an imbalance of supply and demand. Is it really that simple? It actually is. So in this particular case, the lack of supply isn't just because of a surplus of money, right? We have a lack of supply because of global issues, shutting things down, shutting down raw materials or things even, you know, because again, I get this a lot. Well, what about the American goods? How come those are so slow? Because a lot of times those still rely on foreign entities to get us raw material or just parts. So everything is so connected. It's just this one great big huge spider web and somebody messed up our spider web. That's what it is. They messed it up. So until we rebuild it and get all of those little networks back into place, supply is going to continue to be an issue. But as that eases and as we turn to other places to get those, um, it doesn't, doesn't matter if it's, you know, energy. We've talked a lot about energy being such a, um, a weight, an albatross over the whole market. Um, Beyond that, it is getting all of those goods, getting them out. We really rely heavily on, um, com uh, or, sorry, on countries that still have not yet fully opened up. So we will continue to see inflation until we can kind of work our way through that. And that's the hard part about raising rates right now. It's a very um, difficult place for us to be. And we hear a lot about, will the Fed make a safe um, 
a soft landing. I don't care about a soft landing. I care about a safe landing. I can, I can handle the turbulent times as long as it's more of a safe landing. And I think that they are in a very precarious spot trying to figure out just how much to raise rates because we need to. We should have done it a long time ago versus, um, you know, really just beating the public down. So, okay. Anyway, that was a tangent. Didn't mean to do that. So here's our spy chart. And we'll be continuing on up here toward the 20, but back over here to the futures. Futures are looking green here. Not quite as green as they were earlier. We tapped that 20 and pulled back, but this is where we'll continue to watch. And so now I would be much more apt to maybe draw a line from here to that tail, which will take us just above the 20 and very close to that 34. That would be the area I would now look at. And I'm going to go ahead take this one out because it's a very messy chart all of a sudden. There we go. Okay, so that's what we look like here. We are also seeing energy make a nice little rounded bottom. This looks actually, you know, this, again, until the pattern's finished, you don't really know what it's going to do, but this does look like it could come up here to the 50 and make a bare flag. I don't believe that just given the lack of supply on the energy market that we will do that and the time of the year. Um, I think that we may just kind of chop and, and kind of snake our way back up here. That's my personal opinion, just given the global standing that we are in right now, unless we can figure out how to actually loosen up that supply in oil. Okay, but what am I watching for today? Let's go ahead and start with that. Well, almost got ran over by a an Amazon truck yesterday when I was out walking with Lexi. So I'm going to bet on FedEx instead. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, Amazon's on our list too. But uh, FedEx. So there's a lot of uh, shakeup in FedEx. And um, they appointed three new people to the board. Uh, they increased their dividend, I think, 55%. They have this about the same amount of business as UPS, but their market share is our market cap is so much lower. So here we go. This is um, betting on FedEx because they are really angry about it. And I think they're going to try and come in here and fix it. And they're also going to be doing stock buybacks. Stock buybacks are bullish for many stocks. As long as they're doing it for the right reason. And, and that's what they're doing here. We're getting our May durable goods orders in uh, right now. And our Dow Jones is off. We were up uh, over 100 points earlier, and now we're sitting right around 50. Okay, well, let me not pay attention to that. So FedEx is what I'm betting on here. We did have this long wick, but, you know, that's okay. This was a huge gap, right? We held more than half of the move on Friday. So I'm looking at the, now we're into August calls. I am looking at the 819. FedEx 250 call, I want to enter around 243.25 or an opening range breakout. I'm going to stop at 240 as long as I get in there at that 325, or I'm sorry, 243.25. It is a breakout. We had some, you know, nice, if you, this chart looks a little wonky, but you bring the chart back in. We had some nice kind of choppy consolidation right here after this gap. This was the investment gap. This is the earnings gap. So I like the look here. <clears throat> And it um, was building volume, right? So we had some nice volume built in there, like 248.75 and 256.49 for my targets there. FUT, I swear every time I say that, I swear like I'm cursing at somebody, but we had a nice inside candle here up over the 20. Our three and our, our moving averages are kind of spread apart here. So something to think about on moving averages, think of them like a rubber band, like rubber bands being pulled apart. Eventually they're gonna snap back together. Or a spring, maybe a spring's a better way to look at it. Conversely, if all of these are squeezing, you see they tend to then spread apart like a spring. So the spring is being stretched here with these moving averages, so something to keep in mind. However, we still put in a nice little inside candle after a doji. Nice um, overall volume still in there. I like an entry, the uh, 819, 55 call at 5504. I'm going to stop at 52.90. My targets are actually up there quite a bit, 62.75 and 54.95 on FUTU. All right, so the Amazon lady that nearly ran me over. Oh, and ran over my grass and my sprinkler head. Yeah, I was not happy. Okay, 
So I honestly thought about getting some of those big boulders to put near the end of the driveway, but I'm pretty sure my mother would hit them off and then the Amazon lady. So I have to weigh that. Okay, Amazon here. We had that 3-8 cross last week, and then we ended this beautiful um, big, you know, almost triple bottom, but really I look at this as just like a really big W. The, here's the other thing. It could be setting up a head and shoulders, right? We don't know that. Could be, so we have to remember that too. I look at it more like a great big W, or if you're in the room during the day with us, we call this kind of the Kardashian look or the peaches. Okay, anyway, nice move up over the 20, snuck up here and closed over the 34 EMA. I like the 115 calls. I'm going to enter those, uh, and I've, I will look at the 120s as well, but the 115s are the ones that looked nice here pre-market. I will be watching for an entry over 116.71. I'm going to stop at 113.90. It is still building just a little bit of volume there and heading toward the 50 MA. I'm targeting 119.48 and 123.40. Some other looks that I would definitely keep an eye on, keep an eye on those solars. They were looking pretty good last week. Took a little bit of a break on Friday, but still run is probably my favorite here uh, over the 20. So keep an eye on those. Electric vehicles. Right, continue to move on. So Neo, Lee, XPEV, so XBOM here, all of these. I would be very cautious though, again, because these are very stretched. So probably more on the day trade side. I'm continuing to watch Square. That was in our watch list last week. Nice little move. We've had now have a confirmed 3.8 cross, looking for that 20. Marvell, this is a semi um, that I really like here putting in a nice little base, put in a higher low, higher high on the daily, although still under a lot of pressure. Costco, oops. Costco, because I have to go there. No, that's not why. But I do really like Costco here. Again, you can see a higher low pattern looking for that next higher high. Nice moving average crossovers. To the downside, going to watch MO and PM. Um, I know these had two days of good movement, MO in particular. So they are removing Juul from all um, uh, air, all stores. So I think this is most likely going to end up being a bear flag. But we'll see on that. That's another one here that, oh, actually, I don't know why that one's on there. I think that was a mistake. Never mind, not net. I think I just put that in the wrong spot because that definitely looks bullish here with some increasing volume on that 3820. I did. I just put it in the wrong spot. My bad. So put that back in your bullish column. All right, everyone. If you uh, have any questions, be sure to reach out. Heather C. at GivingTreeTrading.com.